What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna be talking all about cardiac anatomy. This is a special video for the new respiratory therapy students who are starting school right now. We're talking last week, uh, this week, whatever it is, tis the season for a lot of new students to be entering in to and on their respiratory care journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. So I gotta give them this tip here real quick, okay? Let's dive in. All right, so as I mentioned in this video, we're gonna be talking all about cardiac anatomy. I got some tips for the new students that are starting out. Before I do that, I wanna tell you about the Respiratory Coach Academy. In this academy, you will find various courses designed to make your life as a student easier, specifically when it comes to passing your board exams. You have the TMC uh, uh, boot camp, you have the CSE boot camp, and you'll also see where you have the formulas co course, the pharmacology course, and the basic arterial blood gas course. Now, what you don't see on this page right now is an anatomy course that has just been posted to the Respiratory Coach Academy. You can always come here to enroll in my free resources uh, course that is filled with just stuff like waveform analysis, ICU checklist, uh, a couple of quizzes, things like that, just to, to, to give you some free access to resources that hopefully make your life easier as a student. Now, don't forget, you can always bundle all of these courses together for one very low, insane price. You can find all that information out by visiting the link that's gonna be posted down in the video description below. So check that link out, come check out the Academy. Let me know um, how I can help you. Now, we gotta get started in this because we're talking about cardiac anatomy now. And I know that uh, uh, students go into respiratory therapy school thinking they're gonna learn all about the lungs. And what we fail oftentimes in that early stage of that process is to realize that you can't separate the heart from the lungs. You see, remember this thing called VQ ratio? It takes ventilation and perfusion. You see, the lungs are great at what they do, but they can't do it without the heart. And it is vitally important that you go into your program or at least early on in your program, when you start learning about signs and symptoms and patient assessment, there's going to be things that you're going to learn the difference in left-sided heart failure versus right-sided heart failure. And you're going to say, well, okay, I can memorize that, but I don't really understand why left side presents like this and the right side presents like this. And that is the first sign that you don't understand cardiac blood flow and the anatomy and how the heart works. And so this is what we're going to do today is just talk about the major structures of the heart and then talk about why it's important to know where this blood flow uh, goes and how it operates. Okay, so first things first, uh, you see we have an image of the heart and the vessels that go out to include pulmonary circulation. You can see the lungs there. So we're just gonna start here. First of all, when you're looking at this screen, anywhere you see blue, like right here and like right here, this is deoxygenated blood. Anywhere you see red is an indication that it is oxygenated blood. And that is going to be an important theme as we talk further in uh, this, uh, video here today. Okay, so we're just going to stay on this track right here. We've got deoxygenated blood returning back to the heart and also up from the inferior segments. And this is what we call the SVC, the superior and the inferior vena cavas. And what they do is they dump deoxygenated blood back into the right atrium. You can see they're feeding in right here. And then the SVC comes in and feeds back in over here. And this is the right atrium. Let me clean that up a little bit. So this would be the right atrium. Now blood goes from the right atrium to the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle. You say, well, Joe, how do I know that's the right ventricle? Well, I know that's the right ventricle because I can see this branching vessel coming off of it. So you can see there's this vessel that comes up and then one goes to the right and one goes to the left. See, that's the pulmonary arteries. And we know that the pulmonary artery arises from the right ventricle. And so we know that the blood is coming in here, going through the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, and then up 
and into the pulmonary artery where it bifurcates into the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Why is this blood still blue? Look at the blood is still blue here because the blood is deoxygenated. Now I want to stop right here for a second because I want to clarify one thing. A lot of times I talk to students and in class and different that, and we talk about what's the difference in an artery and a vein. And the most common answer I get is arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood. And while there is some truth to that, that is not 100% factual and it is not what defines an artery and a vein. You see, what we're going to see here is, is remember what brought these this deoxygenated blood back to the heart. That was the inferior and the superior vena cavus. These are veins. What carried the deoxygenated blood away from the right ventricle and out to the pulmonary arteries and out to the pulmonary capillaries? Oh, that's right. That's the pulmonary artery. So remember, this is deoxygenated blood, but there's something that we're starting to see. And I'm going to leave you hanging here for just a second, and I'll come back to it. But I just want you to watch this. Now, this blood goes out to through the pulmonary arteries. It is deoxygenated and is delivered to the pulmonary capillaries. Now, the pulmonary capillaries are all out here. And this is where the um, blood is participating with gas exchange with the alveolar units of the lungs. So this is where that deoxygenated blood is now picking up oxygen and offloading CO2. And so that's an important part of the process right there. You see, and then after we go through the pulmonary capillaries, we're going to return back to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary vein. So now we see these red vessels here. These are the pulmonary veins bringing blood flow back to the left atrium. Now we can't see the left atrium on my chart here, um, but the left atrium is there. And now the pulmonary veins are bringing oxygenated blood back to the left atrium to where they're gonna go through the mitral valve, leading to the left ventricle, to where then it is that oxygenated blood is going to go out through the aorta, up through here, up through here, and then we see going out this way. And, and that is where oxygenated blood is being delivered via the systemic circulation, the arteries in the systemic circulation to carry this oxygenated blood out to all the tissues within the body for aerobic metabolism. That oxygen is going to be consumed. That deoxygenated blood is going to come back through the SVC and the IVC. Now, again, clearing this up. Clearing this up one more time. All right. Difference between an artery and a vein. I left you hanging earlier, right? So let's just think about this for a second. The SVC and the, and the, and the IVC are veins, and they're bringing blood back. The pulmonary artery is taking blood away. The pulmonary veins are bringing blood back. And then the aorta is taking bl oxygenated blood away out to the body. The aorta is, is, um, is going to lead to all of these different arteries that are going to carry this oxygenated blood away. So my point is this. Arteries carry blood flow away from the heart. Veins bring blood back. It's not always oxygenated or always deoxygenated. You have to really get specific in this. If we're talking about systemic arteries, then yes, their, their, their vessels carry oxygenated blood away from the left side of the heart. When we talk about systemic veins, yes, they are bringing deoxygenated blood back to the right side of the heart. When we're talking about the pulmonary circulation, though, we realize that the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood away from the right side of the heart to the pulmonary capillaries, and then the pulmonary veins carry that oxygenated, oxygenated blood back to the left side of the heart. And that's the difference between an artery and a vein.
is the direction for which the, 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 the vessel is carrying blood either away from or towards the heart. Okay, let's do this one more time. One quick wrap up here. We're going to make it quick. I'm going to show you exactly how you should be able to go through this as you study this. Okay, so here we go. The, the IVC and the SVC dump into the right atrium. We go through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle, through the pulmonic valve to the pulmonary arteries, out for pulmonary circulation where we pick up oxygen and return back via the pulmonary veins, dumping back into the left atrium. We go through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, ultimately through the aortic valve and out through the aorta and out for systemic circulation via the systemic arteries where oxygen delivery is going to happen and then all of that blood returns back around. You have to realize that the lungs lie between the right and the left side of the heart and, and that is, a, is, is an important component to, to understanding why will left ventricular failure present with pulmonary edema but right ventricular failure does not. It, it also helps to explain why some of our patients um, diagnosed with COPD, they live with chronic hypoxemia, and this causes chronic pulmonary vasoconstriction in the pulmonary circulation. So then you say, oh, that's why they develop core pulmonale, because the right ventricle has to push harder to get the blood through those constricted pulmonary vessels. That now makes sense because I know where the problems are happening and I know how the blood flow through the, the cardiac system functions and works and how I can use that in my patient assessment. So I hope that makes sense. Hope you found that helpful. If you're a new student, I promise you, you're gonna be asked questions related, something related to this, I promise you. It'll probably be, the, the blood in the pulmonary artery is, is it oxygenated or deoxygenated? And you're going to go, it's an artery, so it must be oxygenated. But now you know different. So keep that in mind and, and, and really hone in on this. That's, the, that's the, the very basics of blood flow through the heart and some basic cardiac anatomy. Here we go. I'm a respiratory coach. Stay here on YouTube for me. If you're a second year student and you're watching this and you're like, I wish I'd have known that in my first year or my first semester, then do me a favor, send this to your first semester students. Turn them on to these videos that uh, hopefully you have found helpful. Subscribe if you will and leave me a comment. Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach. Come find me and then LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. And then finally, Respiratory Coach at gmail.com. Feel free to send me any uh, uh, questions you have, any comments, anything you want to discuss, you want to set up a, a live boot camp at your school, I'm here for you to discuss that. Respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.